questions. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Are you excited? Are you excited? Okay, thank you so much. I'm also excited. I'm looking forward to grow with you in this journey on the career side. So let's be as engaging as possible. Let me put on my screen. And then we get started. So this session is going to be compiled uh, with different questions. Trust me, that's not how it will always be. We won't just be asking you questions all the time. But this specific uh, session, just because it's going to be according uh, to different people's experience, and it's going to be actually a good practical exercise, you are going to see it at the end of the at the end of the session but as some heads up i'm going to need your interactions like i need you to be active and i will need some of the people to ask like questions i have like six questions session so i will need your attention and i will need your activeness i will need your answers so let's dive into it together Okay, so the session is called Three Real World Jobs, and it's mainly about career gap analysis. So you will understand why we call it Three Real World Jobs when we start looking at the challenge document. But for now, let's focus on the subtitle Career Gap Analysis. So I want to understand just a quick and icebreaker. Anyone who ever had a career goal you once wanted to achieve, but you never achieved. You once had a career goal. You have always thought that, oh, I'm going to be this person, or I want to change my career path to this. But you came to change your mind, and that has never been achieved. Anyone? Anyone? sharp people if also you haven't please interact with me and just say no in the chat box so that i know where you stand okay anyone i'm not seeing anything in the chat box johanna said no okay yeah shayla go ahead and also grace can you share that if you can speak raise your hand but if you can't, can you also share us in the chat box? Like, tell us more. Sheila, you can be taking the stage for now. Um, hi, guys. Um, I hope everyone is fine. So for me, if there's a career goal I wanted, I don't know whether this counts as a career goal, but for the longest time ever, I had always wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. And um, that didn't work out. So... It was a career that I really, really wanted, and it didn't work out. And I'm not in the path, in that path at the moment. And yeah, I guess that's what you wanted me to say. Absolutely. Why didn't it work out? What changed your mind? Um, what happened was um, the schools in my country that offer aeronautical engineering, the one that had, the one had was already established, um, was new. And um, my parents felt like they wouldn't want me to be a case study. The other one um, I wanted to go to was in uh, Cyprus. But then um, the scholarship I got was not, um, it wasn't good enough for me. So I had to think about something else to do. So that's basically it. Okay, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Hilary, do you want to also share with us? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, let me share mine. Um, for, for me, it was also the same in, in, in the engineering part. Uh, it was also aeronautical, but uh, later I switched on to mechanical, but uh, it didn't work out. So the reason is that I, uh, for for my applications, I I think I didn't, I wasn't good at physics in high school, so uh, I didn't get a good cluster points to to get me to the to to do that course. But I was good at math and computer, so I I just ended up in math and computer. 
yeah okay totally understood thank you for sharing grace we are still waiting for you so you can just drop your story into in the chat box so why did i ask that question specifically it's it's because i wanted us to talk about um gap analysis in our career how can you create your personalized career development plan using gap analysis we are going to go into the steps and i will be asking different questions so the very first steps is uh, defining your career goals and i had to put like this whole gif that says check because we are already here at ten academy because there is a goal we want to achieve in our career some of us wants to be generative ai others we want to be data engineers others we want to be machine learning engineers and that's exactly why we are here so we are not going to be talking about how you should be defining your career goal um as part of um your journey to analyzing your gap analysis from uh, where you currently are and what it takes you to be where you want to be actually to give you even a little explanation about what is career gap analysis it's analyzing you have this goal you want to achieve and then you analyze where you are currently and versus where you want to be and then you learn what you have to do for you to be able to get there so the very first step is to define your career goal but that is checked for all of us you give me some reaction if it's checked for you if you are here because you know your career goal because you know you want to be one of the three people we mentioned okay i can see some heads up really great amazing i mean i can see the ladies here okay i can see the guys as well okay i'm happy that we already know that we are here because we have a career goal we want to achieve so what's next into our versus where we are versus where we want to be and what we should be what we should be doing together into our analysis the second one is to assess your current situation i want someone to ask himself or herself this question what skills knowledge or experience do i really already have that are relevant to my career goals and also what skills knowledge or experience that i don't have that are relevant to my career goals so i want someone to tell us why did you come here at Tan academy like what course are you targeting specifically because i know that we get to choose our tracks at the end of the training but when you join Tan academy which track did you want to join specifically was it gen ai was it data engineer or was it ml engineering and then you tell us according to the track you wanted to follow tell us answer these two questions what skills or knowledge or experience do you already have that are relevant to your career goal to you becoming a machine learning engineer and number two you tell us those skills knowledge and experience that you know you don't have that are really want your career goals anyone or is the question clear i believe it's clear anyone or do you want me to repeat Okay, Kumi, go ahead. Uh, thank you. So uh, I joined this course because I want to become machine learning engineer. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, my background, I did statistics. So I'm already somehow cool that when it comes to data distribution, data modeling, some statistical analysis, so i think this is a a good knowledge uh, th these are some good knowledge that i have that can help me in this path but what i am not used to is the programming like i'm not used to structure my code like what we have to do here 
So I think this is the main thing that I will be learning here. Yeah. And the development and uh, how to start uh, my work. Okay, thank you so much for sharing, Kumi. I appreciate. No. Mm -hmm. So the step number two is assessing your current situation. So Kumi has a goal, career goal, of um, of becoming a machine learning engineer. I believe I didn't confuse you. Of mach becoming a machine learning engineer and. Uh, he knows where he currently is and he knows what he doesn't have and that he should be working on those. So this is the very second step of doing your gap analysis, especially in your career, assessing your current situation. So now we have a career goal and then we have already assessed our current situation and then let's see what's next. What's next? is identifying the actions and resources that you need. So I need someone else to help us answer this question. I want you to ask, to ask yourself, what do I need to learn, do, or obtain to improve my skills, knowledge, or experience for me to achieve my career goal? And number two, which resources or opportunities that I currently have that will help me grow and ad advance in my field. I believe number two is easy because we are already here. So it's part of the opportunities we have currently. But I need someone to tell me, to answer this question just from your own perspective. Anyone? Okay, Hilary. Um, okay. Um... Well, the question what what I need to learn is well, what I need to do is uh, to put in more effort and practice to improve my skill. Uh, the thing is that we are, I have the resources and uh, there are many, there are lots of them, but uh, I haven't practiced them and how uh, to apply them. And the resources that, that that I currently have, first of all, is the Eastern Academy, and uh, we are. We are, have the tutors and uh, my fellow uh, my fellow students here, uh, where I can ask for the questions and uh, clarifications, and also have Google and uh, the other resources on internet. Amazing, that's a good answer. And if you ca can ask Hillary, uh, what's your targeted track? Which track do you want to join at the end of the training? My target is. Machine learning engineer. Uh, Machine like. learning engineer. Okay, so that is great. So, in Hillary's perspective, he understand that on this third step of identifying the actions and resources needed for him, he knows that for him to add to um, to achieve his goal, he needs to learn and keep practicing more for him to improve his skills to be able to achieve his goal. And then in the resources, he mentioned a lot of things, which also include 10 Academy. And that's very obvious, actually. It's the opportunity we have, and we also have all the resources in front of us to help us achieve those goals. Number four is to prioritize and schedule your actions. So ask yourself, what are the most important or urgent actions that I need to take to close the gaps and reach my desired state? How much time money, time, money, or energy can I invest in each action? And how will I track my progress and results? Anyone? Anyone to share? So this kind of looks like the previous question, but what is the difference? You have a lot of opportunities. You have a lot of things you can uh, pursue for you to be able to reach your goal. But what is the most important one now? What are some of the urgent actions that you need to take to close the gaps and reach your desired state? What are the most important one, if you understand the question? And also, uh, do you think that there are some time and money and energy you need to invest in each action for you to get there and of course 
how are you planning to track your progress throughout? Shayla, you can go ahead. Um, hi, so <clears throat> my my end goal for this program is basically, okay, I'm hearing everyone saying one individual engineering, but for me, it's for me to gain skill in all of them because all of them require data. So basically, I want to be, I want to be a generated AI engineer, a data engineer, and a machine learning engineer altogether. So the most important or urgent actions that I need to take to close the, the gaps to reach my desired state is um, to be able to make sure I am able to understand the tasks that I'm doing in the program. Because like for my resources, the major one is the 10 Academy, the 10 Academy program. So for me to, the urgent actions are to actually learn, make sure I learn I learn from every single task that we do. And I also track my, I'm able to have um, outputs that make sense. How much time, money, or energy can I invest into each action? So for me, it's time and energy, because I need to dedicate a lot of time and energy into understanding and going at understanding what the program has laid out and going further and getting deep into understanding of everything so that i can be able to gain the skills and then how will i track my progress and my results um i will track my progress and my results according to the performance that i output um week on a weekly basis on a monthly basis and eventually um god willing at the end of the program that's how i'll be able to track my progress and i will know um what level i will have gotten to thank you that's so amazing, Shayla. You answered it very, very well. Thank you so much. And then number five, it's about reviewing and then updating your plan throughout. This one, no one needs to answer, but when you are doing your review throughout the months, let's say here at the training, you are going to be spending six months, but three months are really intensive just for the training, just for the training, the first three months. So on your way, you have to be asking yourself this kind of question. How well am I following my plan and achieving my goals? How well am I following my plan and achieving my goals? Your sub goals to get there. And then number two, the challenge, what kind of challenges or obstacles that you face on a daily basis? Is it internet? Is it something bothering you or is it like, is it like becoming so much for you that they become like challenges because the training is very fast paced and you need to be setting some time aside for you to go again through the recordings just for you to understand everything? Number three, how can you improve? How can I improve my plan or actions to optimize my results? When you are doing your review, throughout your training, be asking yourself these kind of questions. Do not take any kind of decision to focus on something else or to not be active or to not, like for you first before doing something that will affect your training here at 10 Academy, remember why you started, remember why you decided to be here, remember the goal you had and then do this with you. And then, you decide from there. You decide if you need to be distracted from the training or if you have to continue. So now, as we are starting our 10 academy journey with a career goal, let's practice this gap analysis to understand where we stand now versus where the hiring managers expect us to stand. Again, let me repeat this. As we start our 10 academy journey with a career goal, let's practice this gap analysis to understand where we are now at the very start of the training versus where the hiring managers expect us to stand. And this is why exactly we have this career session as the very first session of the training. We want you to go and see the real world jobs that are out there. See what the hiring managers are expecting from someone in your position what they're expecting on gen AI engineers, what they're expecting on ML engineers or data engineers. And then you assess yourself from where you stand now 
versus where you should be at the end of the training. What will that help you? It will help you to know how you need to focus throughout the training. It will help you to see the kind of trainings that you are being um, offered and see if they really match with actually the hiring manager's expectations. If there is something that you will see throughout the training and you see that um, some of the things you saw on these jobs are not being covered in the training, then you will know that you have to ask those kind of questions because we want you to be job ready after three months. We want you to be job ready after three months, technically and non-technically. So that's why we have this very first exercise at the very first um, session of this uh, career sessions at 10 Academy. So let's go ahead. Let's practice this using the challenge. Everything that we saw, everything around the gap analysis. So this is the challenge document. Deadline is on 27th, April. That means on Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. Majority of the deadlines are going to be on Saturdays, 8 p.m. UTC. Majority, not all of them. But majority are going to be on Saturday, 8 p.m. UTC. So when you plan, plan accordingly. Let's go through the introduction. In preparation for your transition into the professional world, it's essential to understand the expectations of employers in your chosen track of data engineering, machine learning, and gen AI engineering. This exercise provides you practical experience in researching job opportunities, analyzing employer requirements, and reflecting on your own skills. Let me repeat that again. This exercise provides you practical experience in researching job opportunities, analyzing employer requirements, analyzing employer requirements, and reflecting on your own skills currently. So by exploring real-world job postings, you will gain insights into the skills and qualifications sought by employers, helping you tailor your training efforts and increase your competitiveness in job markets as 10 Academy expects you to do, to be while at the end of the training program. Yes, we expect you to be job ready like 100% at the end of the program, like really job ready. That is why, that is the reason for this exercise. And you can understand where the title of the challenge comes from. Three real world jobs. That, this is where we are going to be practicing the purpose of this exercise. So we have the instructions to the exercise. Your goal is to explore job opportunities in the field of DE, ML engineer, or Gen AI engineer. And then find three positions that you could possibly pursue by August 2024. Ensure that each, and of course, when you do, ensure that each position meets the following criteria. Before I proceed, you have to choose um, the three positions that you're going to be researching. They should be either for DT, DE only, data engineering only, or machine learning only, or gen AI only. That means to the people who do not know their focus now, like you feel like you want to pursue everything, no, let's just pick one. Let's just pick one. Because at the end of the training, that's where you will get to assess yourself and see that you have efforts in Gen AI or DE or ML. So let's start practicing that. Which track do you want to join? First, decide that. Is it data engineering? If it's data engineering, then you go find three positions in data engineering only. Please, we hope no one submits uh, a report that has three positions in all the three tracks. I hope that is clear, clear. Then, ensure that each position meets the following criteria. It is currently available and seeking placement. So you have to look for a role that is currently open. It is suitable for someone with your level of experience so don't look for someone with like 10 years of experience, five years, four years in Gen AI. Just look for something that is simple and that requires like entry level 
or that it requires like one year experience you know because with that one with one year experience we can fit in either way you can fit in somehow even though you do not have experience but you have your training so yeah um and then remote positions are encouraged we really encourage remote positions not like physical positions where you have to be in a certain country and have to have the right to work there no remote positions are highly encouraged um and then each position might have must have an online job posting with a, a link to apply to directly so what instruction number two do we have you are going to create a Google slide of uh, a Google slide or a PowerPoint presentation of five slides. We again said strictly five slides. We just we want everyone to get used to uh, using PowerPoints efficiently, as we are going to be submitting majority of our reports into PowerPoints. So strictly five slides. We hope no one does 10 or eight or six, it's just five slides. The first slide should be a cover page. The following three should be of each job you found. And then the final slide should be of the second and third questions written down here. So let's see what questions are we talking about here. We have them in the task. Number one, in the three middle slides of your PPT, provide the following details for each job you found. So for the for each of the slides you are going to be having this information for one of the jobs you found and then the second slide and the third slide also you should do the same just for each of the jobs you found i hope i'm not confusing okay so what do you have to put in as you are providing the details for each job you found you have to very fast First and foremost, provide the link to the online job advertisement. And then name of the company, title of the position, team you will be joining. Majority of the times they, they say like our data engineers, um, can we call, okay, our data team or our AI team is looking for this and that. So we want you to specify what team is being mentioned there. What team are you joining? And also is the role remote hybrid or physical because even though we said that we encourage remote positions yes you might find some roles that are really good within your country and if it's physical of course you can work there of course so you just tell us is the role remote is it hybrid or is it physical and then physical location of the job if applicable and then application closing date if provided Skills requirements listed on the job application. Abbreviations can be used just to save space on your PowerPoint. And then years of experience requirements. And then requirements on nationality or right to work or anything related, if any. Because sometimes you may not find them there. Salary information if provided. LinkedIn contact of the hiring manager if available, then analysis of key challenges you might face in security, in securing this role by August 2024 after completing the training. So before I talk about this last sentence, let's talk about this. So when you are answering, I advise you to have this in your PowerPoint presentation. Like let's have it in our, let's have it here, like a next slide and then delete everything okay okay let me like copy paste everything show you the best way to report this I have it in my PowerPoint. Let me change the color to black. And put the bullet points on each and everything for it to look good.
And then remove this last question because it can be a separate one. And then down here, I add a sub, another text box, and then I add my analysis. Let me keep the same font. I put it here, and then write my answers. One, two, three. You are allowed to write as many key challenges you think you might face, as many as possible, any you want. Remember to keep the same font, same color, uh, not too much color link and everything. Like keep everything formal. So we have, and you can also add the title here. But before we do that, this is how we want you to answer. Link to the online job advertisement. Then you put your link here, any link. Name of the company, you put the name. Title of the position, you answer everything, but ensure that everything is, pos is visible to what you are answering. If you get where uh, something is not provided, for instance, for the salary, you can keep not applicable, NA. So yeah, but this is just my simple slide. You can do a visual appealing slide just according to your knowledge on PowerPoint. Anything that looks good, go to Canva or if you already know how to use PowerPoint or Google Slides, then that's great. But if you don't and you need a template, go to Canvas, download one and use it. And make sure that you submit something that really looks great. But ensure that you start with uh, this line and then you add your answer somewhere next. You can have them in a two tables uh, to show what you are answering. Be as creative as you want, really. <laughs> But for each job position, answer all these questions. And then, so let's talk about this. Analysis of the key challenges you might face in securing this role by August 2024, after completing the training. After completing the training, by August 2024, this will be like our fourth month, and it will be the time where we will be starting intensive job applications, so job hunting. And we want you to analyze even though you should have got all the possible skills that are needed in this position by the end of the training, what is something else do you believe that you might face as a challenge by that time? Let me know if that is clear. You have done the training, you have all the skills, but according to what you have in all job positions requirements, What's something do you believe that might become a challenge for you by that time? Even though you have the skills, but what's something else? Do you feel like would still be a challenge if you were the person applying for this same position by that time? Okay. Then number two, this is the very task number one, and this is what we are going to be having in the three middle slides of our PowerPoint. And then on our very last slides, where it's written here, that the final slides should be of the second and third questions written down here. These are our questions. Write down minimum three differences between your current skills and the skills requirements of each, po each job position. Now, this is just in the current, in the present, in the current situation. What, do your um, current skills versus the skills requirements in each job positions you found. And then number three, write four lessons learned from conducting this assignment and how it has influenced your career exploration journey. Right? Four lessons from conducting this assignment and how it has influenced your career exploration journey. You tell us, what did you learn from analyzing where you are now versus what you need to do to get where you want to be? Great. But I'm thinking that on the slides numbers, let, let's make them six slides. 
just in case, because this question might be long, since you have to do this, um, this comparison on all of the three jobs that you found, on each of the jobs you found. So yeah, the final two slides. Guess this is better. Okay. Then you can read here about the useful the usefulness of this exercise in life. It's because this exercise will challenge you to actively engage in job search process, utilizing online resources to identify suitable jobs. As you go throughout the training, you are welcome to do that. Analyze job requirements and reflect on how your own skills align with the employer expectation. Through this hands-on exploration, you will not only enhance your understanding of the job market, but also gain valuable insights into your own strengths and also your areas of growth. So that is it. I want to take up some questions. Do we have questions? Is everything clear? Is the challenge clear or anything else? Anyone? Okay, I can see someone asked, how do we get this challenge file? We are going to share you the folder to the careers, to the careers contents for this week. Rodas is going to be sharing with you shortly in all resources. Hashtag all resources on Slack. All right, Jolie, go ahead. All right, good afternoon. Uh, my question is um, for 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 me. Um, I did like to work for a remote company, and is is, is there is there a um, restriction to the kind of um, application you can fill? Because, for example, if you check LinkedIn, the most common data engineering jobs for LinkedIn are for Turin, which they are hiring managers for that they are source the works they, they bring. So, have you heard about Turin? They are like a company, middleman company. So, is those kind of job acceptable as well? I'm not sure I coached your question really well. Yeah, if, if, if the jobs were, were to search for, if if it directs complaint posts, you get because in some cases there are there are some jobs where the the middle hiring manager in between like Torin on LinkedIn where they post for their clients, you get so you might not get direct access to some of those information on those questions because they are like a hiring um, organization so they are the they interfere between the clients and the um, employer. So they do the posting, the um, the posting of the job, the interview, and link you directly with your clients when you pass those successful stages. So are those kind of job, um, does it fit these um, requirements for these questions? So you mean like jobs that are posted on crossover? Yeah, like, like crossover, touring, crossover, like they are those kind of jobs. Yeah, but why why should we go to crossover when we have so many other companies hiring directly? I'm just asking a question. I, I'm not saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now I get your question. So where, wherever you can find these jobs, it's okay. If you can be on Indeed, on LinkedIn, on on Glassdoor, on any job posting website, it's very okay. But it's, very, it's highly advised to just look for the company that is hiring directly. Because even, even when we start the application phase, we will be focusing on looking for jobs that are hiring for themselves directly, not those ones that bring third parties. You know? But it's really OK. If you find something interesting on crossover, also bring it. I'm sure it answers majority of the questions. And actually, that's why we kept some of the questions optional. For instance, salary information. 
if it's a company hiring for themselves, they are going to be providing information on salary, especially like US remote jobs. They are going to be providing salary information. But if it's a role posted by crossover, then they won't be disclosing this information. So wherever you can get the, the, those roles, it's very okay, Jolie. That's why we have some of the options kept optional because we know that uh, majority of the roles doesn't provide information to all these kind of questions we have. So it's okay. It's okay whether you can get it from third party or directly from the company, but we highly advise you go to the company page. Get to even know those companies. It's within your own advantage. Go straight to the company page and see the jobs they are posting, either on any platform they are on or even on their websites. Yeah. That's a good question, though. Okay, is data science part of data engineering or ML engineering? I, I can put it in data engineering. But let's look for data engineering roles specifically, not data analysts, not data science, not data anything else, just data engineering, because that's where, what we are here to train for. Good question, Daisy. Any other question? Any other question? Okay. If there are no questions, then will we share the templates? Uh, which template specifically, Maxim? For the slides, no, we won't. Uh, we don't have any template for this exercise, really. So just use any template you can find by yourself or craft one from scratch. Yeah. And... Um, Okay, and also why don't we share different templates for you to save, to save you time from creating Google Slides? It's because of course, when we join different roles or to those who have already been working in this field, you know that there are different reports you have to put out, especially to the management team who do not understand coding or who do not understand tech language. And you have to put something in a very well appealing PowerPoint for you to put them through it, you know, put the reports into your PowerPoint. Like this, this is going to be part of your majority of your jobs. So that's why we practice this majority or even almost all the submissions of careers that are going to be in PowerPoint. So it's something nice to learn as well. Abraham said, any general recommendations? Oh, Abraham, I'm not sure I understand. Like recommendations for the jobs? Yeah, you let you clarify. Jolly, you can speak. Okay, um, my other question should be, how do we know um, the right fits for the job? Like to know the experience level? Because basically, for me, I have other IT experience. Should I count it as part of my experience level? So I should know the ranges. If it's a junior role position, I'm looking for intermediate or, or okay. ad ad advanced. So because in some cases, they'll say uh, probably seven years experience in IT, then probably three years in data engineering or machine learning. So how do, how do we correlate our experience in general to know the level of the kind of jobs we should look for for this um, assessment? It, it should be written there. It should be written there. You have to look. Uh, they are looking for someone, for instance, um, in someone who has like two years of experience or someone who's just an AI engineer, but has background 
let's say in IT or mathematics or data science or anything that is related. So you just go according to the information you have there. Let me see if we can do a quick exercise, at least on LinkedIn. Let me see. One moment. Okay, I got one. So let me change my screen here. So what did I do? I went to my LinkedIn page. This is my LinkedIn page. And then I had to come here on jobs. Let's start fresh. So this is my home page. I go here on jobs. I have everything on my dashboard regarding what they have in their job feature for me. And then I go here and I search for junior data engineer i'm talking about people who are here just because we do not have much experience in data engineering and then emia of course i'm putting here emia emia means uh europe middle east and africa and africa because this is where we belong i'm in africa so when majority of the roles are written emia remote that means they are considering anyone from europe middle east or africa so before I search for anything US, anything Asia, I have to look for where I can be prioritized first. So I have to check on different roles we have here. So let's look for this one. This is a junior data engineer. And why did I search for junior data engineer? It's because we do not have much experience in data engineering so far to take up managerial or leadership positions. Even though you have years of experience in other fields, these people are just looking for a data engineer. So we have to search for where we can fit specifically starting from. Actually, when we also get in the job search phase, we focus on applying on junior roles in the very first place. Um, then. Let's see, this company is called Magera. It's located in Cyprus, but they are looking for someone working remote. And this is about the company. This is the intro about the company. So let's take a look about uh, on the typical responsibilities for this role and the kind of person they are looking for. So you are going to be participating in all aspects of data platform life cycle, including high level design, architecture definition, implementation, testing, and deployment. And you are going to be curating complex data sets to prepare a, for either ML modeling or to be used for analytical work. And they mention a lot of things. And also they mentioned that uh, you will work with these specific tools. They mentioned the tools that you are going to be working with and technologies. Python, SQL, Google, um, and then Data Studio ML libraries. Okay, then we have everything. They did not mention years of experience because this is a junior position, which is actually great. But what are they looking for specifically? They're looking for a university degree in software engineering, computer science, or something similar. So if you have a degree, then you know this is for you. Strong knowledge in Python, strong knowledge in SQL, and then excellent command in English language. And that is done. You bonus points, you have to be fulfilling these, like you have completed relevant internships or strong understanding of relational database or experience with ML modeling, which is a great thing because we are going to be learning he it's here um, at an academy. So some of the people like this company, they did not add the specific amount of the compensation, but they just said competitive compensation. So if you were to keep, uh, to, to choose this position to submit in your report for this challenge, then on the salary, you just 
put not applicable because it's not mentioned. But also, we highly encourage you to look for roles that tick all the boxes we have because it's for your own advantage. You get to know the kind of salaries that are being offered in these positions, you know? So just do your research. Unless you do not find those roles that tick all boxes, then get something like this. But since this is in your own advantage, try to find the roles that tick all the boxes so that you can learn from them and you can do your gap analysis very well. And you can know what to expect at the end of the training. And you can know what the hiring managers will be expecting from you. And you can know, of course, what they will be offering you as well. So that's a great thing. Uh, yep, this is what we have. So you, now you know how to filter your jobs. You can even go to EMEA. Or oh, this is how you can filter experience level, internship, entry level or even associate, not mid-senior. And then you get more other jobs, and then you read through and get to see what the hiring managers are looking for in your position. Yep. That is it. Any other question? Okay. Binam says, hi, I think I missed something. The job application are exclusively for data engineering. No, I think you joined later, Binam. Let me bring it up again. So the instruction says that you need to explore job opportunities in the field of data engineering or actually let me put all so that we know what to do, or machine learning engineering, or gen AI engineering. So according to what interested you to join Ten Academy, like is your end goal to become a gen AI engineer, then your assignment will be based on the jobs within gen AI engineering only, only. Or was your goal to become a data engineer? then the whole assignment, all the jobs you're going to be looking for, all the questions you're going to be answering, they have to be related with data engineering jobs you found. Same goes to machine learning engineering. Is it clear now, Binium? Okay, all right. So amazing, we are right on time. Thank you everyone for joining. I we look forward to be seeing your uh, submissions and to be going through them. Yes, and we'll be adding rubrics here in the challenge document just to show you what we are going to be considering while grading the assignment. Yeah, so that is it. Thank you everyone for joining. Let me pause the recording.